Hey, welcome back. It's another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jelen from Mr. Excel. We'll be joined by Mike Gervin from Excel is Fun. This is episode 94, Find Cubic Feet. Hey, Mike, I got a good one for you today. This was sent in from France. They have a list of product descriptions over here and two questions. Uh, looking for either the word top load or front load based on what's found and then looking for cubic feet and going back to get the value and just as a, uh, uh, just uh, to confuse things, this person's from France, they need to take the 2.6 and make it 2 comma 6. All right, uh, okay, first one. I, I think solving the front load is kind of, kind of straightforward. We look for the find of top load in the lower of this and it's going to return a value when front load is found. When it's not found, we're going to get the value error. So, I'm going to say, equal if error, no, no, that's not going to work, I'm going to say equal if is error, that whole thing, if that's an error then it's not a front loader. So we're going to put uh, nothing, otherwise we're going to put front load. And I'm actually going to take that whole big if statement, concatenate a second if statement with it. And let's see, we're out of the screen here, but I'm going to change the second one to be front front load in two places. And let's see, it's actually a top load. So, let's see how that looks. We're getting the top load and the front load. I think it looks good. So let's take a look at this formula. I'll make the Excel screen smaller so everyone can uh, have a look. Uh, so the simple concept, do the find. The find is either going to return a value, a number, or an error. Check for the error. If it's the error, then it's not a top load, otherwise it is. And then repeat the same thing, concatenate that whole thing together, and we have our answer. The second one though, the second one is the one that I, uh, just makes my head hurt. And so anytime that my head hurts, I instantly think VBA. VBA is the way to go. Let's go out to VBA and we're going to create our own little custom function here. I call it CF for cubic feet. We're going to pass it a value. Start out by initializing that variable and then I'm going to go through look character by character all the way through um, my value and see if starting at that character position, so we're going to start looking at character 1 for a length of 5, does it say cubic feet? Look at 2 for a length of 5, does it say cubic feet? Eventually, you know, out of row, we're position 17, we're going to get to cubic feet and then from there, I'm going to start from that position 17 and go backwards, go backwards and start looking at the characters. If it's a space, I'm not going to include it but I'm going to keep going. If it's a period, then I'm going to concatenate a comma with what's already in cubic feet. If it's any digit, then I'm going to concatenate that digit with what's in cubic feet. If it's anything else, a letter, anything, then I know that I'm done and I found the end of the whole thing, so I just exit the function. All right, now to make this work, we're going to say equal CF, that whole big string over there. Okay, now, so I'm getting an answer here. Uh, where it has cu dot feet, but not an answer there. Where it has cu dot space feet or cu feet. Uh, that's really, 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 really bad. Um, so now this is going to be a little bit dangerous. You're going to have to spot check this. We're just going to look for cu and hope that there's not a model called the cute model or something like that. Uh, so let's go back and re-enter these. There we go. And now it starts to work. Here where there's no cubic feet at all, we get nothing. Uh, I don't like mine, mine's a little dangerous. Mike, let's see what you have. Thanks, Mr. Excel. Dangerous. If yours is dangerous, mine's going to be double dangerous. And really, here's the problem. We're looking, trying to get that number, or that number, or that number from a text string where we really need some sort of consistent pattern. But here we have CU space after the, the number. Right here we have space CU period space. Down here we have space CU period no space. And before we have 24 inches space. Here we have comma space. So I'm not quite sure how to do this except for look for CU. So in the second part here, right, I'm going to look for space CU. Now the first part is, in essence, we're looking up top load and front load within a text string. And they need to either list top load or front load. Well, instead of find, I'm going to use search. And the difference between find and search is search is not case sensitive. It also 
uh, can handle wildcards, which is not applicable here. So I'm going to use find text. And the text I'm going to look for is top load within that right there. Now it's going to do the same thing. You can see as soon as you see a cell reference is not color coded, like it should be blue, you know there's a problem with your formula. So that'll do the same thing as find. It tells us the position where it finds the T in top load 26. Now I'm not really looking for top load. I'm looking for top load or front loader. So I'm going to put this in curly brackets, which is array syntax. So I'll have two items, top load, comma, or front load. Now by putting it in these curly brackets, that's an array constant. So now if I highlight this and hit the F9 key, the fine text is expecting a single text string. We're giving it two, so it will return two things. So I'm creating a little array with either a number or an error. So the only two possibilities are if there's never going to be top load and front load together is number error or number error. I'm going to Control Z. Now what am I going to do with that? That, in essence, is going to be the trigger to either dump top load or front load into this cell. I'm going to use the lookup function. <clears throat> now the great thing about lookup is we can give it some lookup value. It has a lookup vector, which is the trigger to then say what you should choose from the result vector. So what am I going to look up? Well, the, this is text, the largest number of characters in a cell. 2 caret 15, 2 raised to the 15th power minus 1. So my lookup value, I just want to leave that big number in there. That way it will always find either number here or here. So lookup value, the lookup vector, which is the trigger to then comma list my result vector, right? So and I'm going to just paste that. Um, oops, I did that front load. Instead of front, it should be front load. All right, so then I can close parentheses, control enter, and then double click and send it down. So yeah, OK, so that's working. <laughs> now let me fix the front part, front load. All right, now what about those NAs? We can simply in 2007 and 10 use if error. What's great about this is you list the function once, and then you come to the end and tell it what to put in the cell if it's an error. I'm going to put double quote, double quote, which means a null text string. It'll show nothing on the, in, the, in our result, formula result. Perfect. Now, in earlier versions, you'd have to use if and is error and then list the lookup twice. All right, now to the second part. <laughs> I'm going to search for the space CU. Now, I also like this search function, because watch this. Equals S searches the first function in the S's, so I can just type equals S tab. I'm going to look for space CU, comma, within. Now, this is also going to give me a position, but I'm going to use that 8, right? That's that position right there. I'm going to use it inside the mid function. The mid function can extract some. Uh, subtext within a larger text string. So there's the text, comma, the starting position is not 8. It's going to be 8 minus 4. Now I'm thinking there's the 8, so 1, 2, 3, and 4, just in case there's a 1. Now sometimes that'll deliver an extra space, but that won't be a problem. So starting position 8 minus 4 and number of characters 4. Now, that's given us space, and mid always spits out text, right? But there's an extra space there. Now, I kind of like that 2.6. Maybe they do want a comma. But if you want just the 2.6, you could use the trim, right? Trim is great. It gives you a haircut. No, no, I mean, puts you on a diet. <laughs> no, no. It just gets rid of spaces, right? Ah, but check this out. If you really want, did want 2.6, you could simply, I undid there, add 0. Now, converting a number stored as text, a number stored as text back to a number, you do any math operation. So I'm going to add 0. But the add 0 will get rid of the space also. Now, if in fact you didn't want that 2.6, we'd have to not use that. I would use trim. And that gets rid of the space. And then substitute and simply say, hey, substitute. There's the text, comma. The text we want to substitute is find that period in double quotes. 
and put in, in double quotes, a comma. And then, of course, you could, uh, it looks like it's working all the way down. You could do your if error, if is error. All right, I'll throw it back to Mr. Excel. <laughs> yeah, all right, that's good. Trim. Next time I need to go on a diet, I'll just use the uh, trim function. All right, well, I want to thank everyone for stopping by. We'll see you next time for another Dueling Excel podcast from Mr. Excel and Excel is fun.